New tonight at 6, two black ranchers in rural El Paso County say their cries for help and allegations of racism have been largely ignored by the sheriff's office for years. And you've likely heard some of the Mallory story, which has been shared thousands of times on social media now. Those viral posts have led to national scrutiny over how the El Paso County Sheriff's Office has handled more than two years of disputes between the couple and their neighbors. Now they're speaking exclusively to Denver 7 on camera together for the first time. And Denver 7's Micah Smith has tonight's exclusive that now has El Paso County deputies defending their actions. Farming while black in America. Farming while black in America. The voice you hear is Nicole Mallory's, and the person being arrested is her husband, Courtney C.W. Mallory. The Mallory's are black ranchers in rural El Paso County and say this moment is the culmination of years of blatant racism by community members and the El Paso County Sheriff's Office's failure to respond. A lot of uh, their pets, their uh, uh, pets have been poisoned and killed. Some of their livestock has been poisoned and killed. Dr. Vern L. Howard is teaming up with Portia Prescott and Rashad Younger from the NAACP to help the Mallory's. Basically, the Mallory's have been harassed on their property and on their land. At that point, it became very clear that they weren't necessarily safe. Animals poisoned and killed, a couple feeling harassed and terrorized. Huge claims that we'll break down. But first, how do we go from the Mallory's being seen as victims to the ones in handcuffs? The El Paso County Sheriff's Office investigated and decided it was the Mallory's who were felony stalking their neighbor. We got our hands on the arrest affidavit. It focuses on multiple complaints from the Mallory's next door neighbor. It's clear there's years of animosity on both sides of this easement road, and it's this road that has been center stage for many of their interactions. Like CW and Nicole walking between the properties with their hands up, yelling, hands up, don't shoot. The affidavit mentioned a 19 page log that the neighbor maintained was supporting video and photos of each interaction she considered to be stalking. But when it came time for the investigation, it wasn't her cameras pointed at them, but the Mallory's cameras pointed toward her property that deputies confiscated. With the affidavit in hand, we went to the Mallory's ranch. It was a windy day, so we met inside our news car. After talking for nearly an hour, the Mallory's finally agreed to do their first sit-down interview with me. You removed the, the only support that I have and the only other eyes I have to, 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 to try to catch what's going on around me. CW said the sheriff's office is using video caught on the neighbor's security cameras against him, but his cameras were removed. I asked him why he'd walk by their neighbor's home with hands in the air. My cows were loose, so we went down there, got our cows, and the, we pushed them back the way they came out. And as we, I said, we, we need to put our hands up and, and say, please don't shoot us. We're just getting our cows. Please don't shoot. We're just getting our cows. Let's be clear. Um, me putting my, I just want to revisit that. Me putting my hands up, us putting our hands up, and um, is a safety um, as an African-American. It's been said a lot that this is a land dispute between neighbors. That's what it boils down to. And that you all or your neighbor could choose to avoid each other because you have so much land. What is your response to that? Let me be clear about something. I do not have a neighbor dispute. My dispute is with El Paso County Sheriff's Department for enabling this behavior. Nicole says one deputy in particular who she's filed multiple complaints against is leading the charge. In what I believe is a modern day KKK assault against my family. That's not a small accusation to make, but Nicole says Facebook comments and a community page turned to blatant racism after the sheriff's office got involved. Comments like, I was amazed at how much property was tagged Black Lives Matter. Didn't expect that kind of in your face crap way out here. Let's all go have car issues on that road. And are there any restrictions on size of pitchforks and fire sticks in Colorado? From there, Nicole says it turned to physical attacks. Animals being gutted, our lives being threatened, people being sent to our home um, under threat of lynch, lynching, hanging, 
pitchforks, fire. We had a chicken coop set ablaze. I asked the Mallorys what the sheriff's office did in response. Nothing. 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 Actually, I think maybe what happened was they were trying to figure out how to charge us with a crime. Since the time of Mr. Mallory's arrest, my office has received numerous emails and calls with people voicing concern with how we have handled the Mallory situation. On Tuesday afternoon, Sheriff Joseph Royball finally answered questions about the case that's gone viral on social media and shared body camera video painting the Mallory's as combative and unwilling to cooperate in unrelated investigations. But the sheriff's office provided few details about the Mallory's current claims of harassment and racial discrimination. The one concrete update was the decision by the sheriff to review two dozen prior cases. In the end, they reopened two, one of which involves the Mallory's as the victims. And the sheriff said he more than anyone wants to ensure there is no racist behavior inside his department. No one would be more eager than I to rid my office of a deputy sheriff who was racist and treating members of the community unfairly. We started asking the El Paso County Sheriff's Office for records, reports and interviews five days ago. We were denied and given a bill for thousands of dollars. There are many more allegations addressed by the Sheriff Tuesday, including a conspiracy about a murdered ranch hand and the arrest of Nicole Mallory nearly two years ago when she fired a shot at a process server who had entered her private property without notice. I promise to follow up in more detail tomorrow on Denver 7. And the El Paso County Sheriff's Office has now decided to release more than 120 pages of records pertaining to cases involving the Mallory's. Unfortunately, that release happened right before this newscast began. So Micah is now combing through through those new records and she will bring you an in-depth update tomorrow on Denver 7. And this story is so important because the number of black farmers across America has declined greatly over the past century. Let's break down the numbers for you. Researchers at UMass Boston looked at data from the USDA Census of Agriculture. They found that black farmers lost $326 billion worth of acreage in the 20th century. Currently, black farmers own less than 1% of all farmland. Colorado was home to a historically black farming settlement in the early 1900s, Deerfield in Weld County is now a ghost town, but it was once a place to end the cycle of poverty. They knew that if they could own their own land, own their own homes, they could use that to pass on to their children. They could sell it. They could borrow against it. Discriminatory lending policies and forced sales are said to be major factors in the loss of land.